in lesson 13, the students built on what they did in lesson 12 with the greatest common factor and used it with the distributive property. So they had, at the beginning of the class, they had a sum of two numbers, 25 plus 30. The directions were asking them to rewrite this sum by pulling out the greatest common factor of the two numbers and rewrite it with help of the distributive property. So today the students and I took the numbers 25 and 30 in the latter method. We looked and saw what factor could go into 25 and 30 evenly, or without a remainder is probably the most appropriate way to say it, and 5 can go into 25 and 30 without a remainder. And 5 goes into 25 5 times, 5 fits into 30 6 times. And 5 and 6 do not have another common factor that's greater than 1. So I know I found the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor of 25 and 30 is 5. So the students will pull out the 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6. So the answer to this problem would be 5 parentheses 5 plus 6. And the students could do a little mental check with this. 5 times 5, if, if the 5 was distributed over the parentheses, is 25. And 5 times 6 is 30, okay, if the 5 was distributed over the parentheses. Another cool benefit from the latter method is that this can really be seen right in your ladder here, okay, 5 parentheses 5 plus 6. Um, so let's try another one. Okay, students had to rewrite 18 plus 24, the sum, by looking at the greatest common factor and pulling it out and then rewrite it with the help of the distributive property. I know 18 and 24 are both divisible by 2. Then I look at the factors of that go into 9 and 12 evenly. And I know that 3 goes into 9 and 12 ev evenly. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And if I look at 3 and 4, I know the only common factor that goes into them evenly is 1. So I know I am done with my ladder. So I take this stuff on the side and I times it. 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm going to pull the 6 out of the 18 and the 24. 18 divided by 6 is 3, 24 divided by 6 is 4. Okay, again, this would give you 6, and then you would have 3 plus 4 in parentheses, just so I can have students start to understand where they're getting it from. And we did the reverse of this in class today, too. We gave the students um, problems where the GCF was already factored out, and we asked them if they could put it back in really wanting them to understand that a number can be pulled outside of parentheses and written without a sign and it would indicate multiplication. So 7 times 2 is 14, 7 times 3 is 21, and that's how you would rewrite it. We also spent a lot of time talking to them about what this looks like written out. This is 7 times 2 in parentheses added to the product of 7 times 3. Okay, I'm going to start with that with the next example. If you distribute the greatest common factor over parentheses, this really is 8 times 9 plus 8 times 2. That would give you 72 plus 16 written as a sum. Okay, and that's a brief outline of what we did today in Lesson 13.